Welcome to the next in our series of lectures for uh, our TV production class at De Anza. This is on chapter 12 and 13. This is about video editing and really about editing in the post for the post-production environment. We covered video switching, which is live um, editing in our last lecture. So the Zettel book says basically all you need for a really good video editing setup is uh, a fast computer and software and, and ample storage, okay? So you can have a lot of different um, configurations for this, but this is something that you could even do um, yourself with your own desktop as long as you have enough storage and the right software and, and a nice fast computer for it. So there are basic controls that um, all the video software has. And this is a screen grab from the book. All right, so you can take a look at the book and, and, and take a deep dive into all of these different places that you can go on the video screen, on the, the, the editing screen, but you know, you have your project panel and, and uh, source sources and things. So you've got a playback head, you've got your audio pane and your video pane. And they all operate similarly, but each video editing software has its own quirks. And you need to, you know, when, when you use video editing software or any sort of editing, audio video editing software, you need to familiarize yourself with how the similarities and the differences of each um, editing software. Um, I always say that um, it's a great thing to be able to be a cross platform editor okay so i know a lot of people like a specific like i like premiere but i don't like this or i like pro tools and i don't like that audio editing software but to be marketable is to be somebody that can edit across these different platforms and is comfortable with with multiple ones so it's a good idea to familiarize yourself and learn different ones at different times Okay. Now, continuity is an important part of putting together your, um, your production. A lot of times um, things are shot out of sequence or we do multiple takes um, on, on a um, particular scene. And during that scene, things can get moved around. Okay, so people uh, like the actors can move around or, or, or the actors can move set pieces around while they're practicing or, or performing different parts of the, the scene. So a continuity person uh, needs to be able to uh, keep track of where all the objects and people are in the frame so that when pictures get edited together, even if they're shot out of sequence or you use different takes, because a lot of times you're taking uh, multiple takes and assembling them into one piece, this continuity person can wrangle all of the shots and all the props and all the costumes so you can see what's going on. Um, and it makes sense. Um, this might have been shot right from two different scenes right here and and we have an actor that it, the actors have switched places uh the cup uh, it's okay but you know imagine that he picks up the cut and sets it over here at some point continuity uh director continuity person is going to have to like replace the cup right there for the next shot you know the next time you you film that shot and same thing over here our computer monitor is a little bit different so if these were two different shots that are going to be edited in the same scene, the continuity person um, should have looked out for these kinds of issues. Now, we've dealt with storyboards in our class before, and I showed you storyboards from all of our projects when we get, you know, from the beginning. And it's a good idea to have a good storyboard because that helps you visualize what your production is going to be about and what your scene is going to be about. And you can make changes as you go along, but a good storyboard is essentializing for conceptualizing the shots. You know, I'm going to start with a, a, a longer shot here and go into a, a, a tighter shot there. And then there's going to be some sort of what is that an explosion or some sort of, you know, effect that is going to happen there. Some people even put arrows, like if you put an arrow in the 
in the down here, you might be saying, well, we're going to be panning this way or, or tilting or, or moving this way or dollying in. So sometimes you, um, some people, when they're doing their storyboards, put arrows on the bottom or the, or in the bottom of the frame or, or somewhere down here, um, depicting camera movements, those kinds of things. So best practices when you're doing your recording is to slate each take okay <laughs> you've got to do that um, because you need to know exactly what the take is and and, and which ones you're going to edit to because you you may start with a basic take and then you're going to need to edit in different other parts different takes from that shot roll and it's good to have each each take slated and you know that's like using that clapper thing back there right you can do that um, leave margins for editing for pre-roll and post-roll around the action so just don't go click action you know uh, as a director as a director you know you do your slate wait a few beats and then you call for action so that you can edit in and same thing when you're done when the, when the scene is over you don't immediately stop rolling Give it a few extra beats because sometimes you need some pre-roll to roll into a scene, like if you have to do a, a crossfade and same thing on, on coming out. Um, it's something that, that a lot of people don't think about, but your sound people need to record background sounds. Okay, and, and just like you're going to be recording B-roll for your picture people, because they're going to record extra shots that you might use for editing, your sound people need to record background sounds so that they, they can add that in. All right, go back to that scene of the office, right? Um, your sound people need to record office sounds, all right? A good long take of office sounds that they could loop in the background over the different, you know, cutaway shots that you use for that office take so always be sure to record background sounds if you're out on location it could be traffic it could be you know wind noise it, it could be all sorts of different things like that record cutaway shots and supplemental shots indicating locations and objects so we just call this establishing shots you uh, you know back in the day you'd always start with an establishing shot we are here and then you would going closer and here's you know where we are at you know you go into close-ups but it's good to have different shots to 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 do locations and you can do long shots you can do medium shots you never know if you're going to need them but it's good to have those kinds of shots on hand in case you need to to indicate location or objects things that are happening in your scene per pertinent things like automobiles or desks or the office itself those kinds of things you know just cover your tracks there to make sure you have establishing shots um, your producers your assistants need to be um, labeling media and taking notes taking copious notes all right and as a director you should be too um, taking notes about uh, what takes worked well and what parts of the takes worked well but label all of your media so that you know where you're at and then make protection copies and posts so rarely i mean you don't really you don't want to it's nice now that we're in the digital environment all right in the analog environment you'd immediately make a protection copy and do your editing to that right now just make a copy of all your files and have that as a protection copy save that somewhere and you can start editing on your files if you want so a roll when we talk about a roll and b roll a roll is the um, main um, body of what the viewer is going to see all right it's uninterrupted shots of scenes and so think here that we are interviewing this this person right there all right and so what we have is one long piece of us talking to that person and we could be asking them questions answering different questions things like that and then the b-roll are additional shots close-ups added to the scene and then what we can do with the b-roll is when we get to edit points like let's say we this this host answers a question and then goes on and makes another statement but it's further down in our interview and we have to edit it here we're going to get a little jump cut 
you know, he's actually kind of, you know, maybe he was leaning this way. And all of a sudden on the other answer, he was leaning this way. Right. Well, if we if we edit those two together, he's going to be making a jump cut. And so we could patch over that with a little bit of B roll so that it's over here answering the question. Right. We go to the B roll, see something else. We still hear him talking, answering the question. By the time we're off of that B roll, they're over here. And you don't notice that we actually made the edit that we're using two parts or the interview from different parts of the interview it could be you know minutes away or downstream a lot um again take notes um when you take notes you can take um uh, the take numbers the in and out information audio information for editing um, this a lot of times is called the edl the edit decision list Okay, and this is happens to be a handwritten EDL. Okay, but a lot of times there are EDLs that are generated by the software itself, by, by some of the recording software that you're using or some of the editing software. So that's okay too, but this is happens to be a handwritten um, example. And this one is, you know, keeping track the media number. So that's like, you know, what little, uh, uh, chip that you're on, what, what recording media you're on, the, the shot that you're using, the take of it, and then in the in and out, like maybe in feet and frames, you know, or in time code, the in queue and out queue, what kind of transitions you're using. And then also you can uh, keep notes for, for what sound is going on and, and any other remarks like, you know, uh, great take, good answers. Uh, this was an outtake, those kinds of things. Uh, so, you know, but we're using a part of that outtake for B roll or something. Um, so you can keep um, notes uh, on what's going on. Now, in the uh, following chapter, um, in 13, um, Zettel starts talking about the mental map okay and this is really a lot about his aesthetics and and has to do a lot about with his vectors that we we um discussed in chapter chapter six and that is you know the vectors or the 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 way that that objects and people are placed in a screen uh will imply other objects that are off screen so in this case we have a shot of a person right here, and that's implying that they're talking to somebody over here. And if we have that person looking this way, looking to their left, it implies another person over here. And, and this, these two shots imply another person over here. So just remember when you're shooting things, um, what, it, what is the implication for the scene? What are people mentally filling in with, with the psychological closure? Remember that? And make sure that when you assemble your scene together, it will make sense because we do, like for this shot, we do need a, a B-roll of somebody over here going, mm -hmm. or some B-roll of this person over here going, you know, reacting to that. So make sure that um, you've got enough shots to cover this mental map. And remember your vector guidelines from chapter six, you know, our um, index vectors, right, that are, are pointing different directions. And also remember that rule of thirds that we had from, from that chapter two, because where people are on the grid of the screen helps in placing those vectors. And don't forget about the 180 degree rule. Okay. Now, we have said in the past, you got to stay all, all on one side of the 180 degree rule, but you can sometimes cross the, ve the vector line. All right. But you have to do that with purpose if you're going to do that. Um, uh, uh, just, you know, if, if you don't have a purpose in your video for crossing the 180 degree rule, then, then don't. But sometimes it, it will make sense to, to do that if you're, if you're changing um, parts of the story. Um, here's a couple of examples where there's a Z axis switch, okay? And so we have a camera one over here, camera two over here. And when we cut in between them, the people move back and forth, right? Shot one has, has person uh, the guy over here and then he flips okay so this is a 
a place where if you went across a 180 degree rule, you're going to get that. So just be careful with that. And it doesn't matter if you're doing a two shot or a one shot, crossing the vector line can give you, you know, give you that problem. So be careful when you're you're shooting, you know, doing a single camera shoot and assembling shots if you are crossing that vector line. And what that does to your mental map, right? Look at the mental map of, of shot B here implies the person over here looking back at her. But if you shot that together, if you if, when you edit that together, your mental map's gonna be a little messed up, right? Here's something that you see quite a bit, and it's actually a good trick for, for ending a scene, ending a show, right? You're, you're doing a Z-axis position switch. So here in shot one, we have the, the actors, um, you know, facing the camera. And so they can be, you know, walking towards the camera or something like that. And then we get a cut where the, all of a sudden they're walking away from the camera. And that will imply some time switch, okay? Like, like time has moved on, or something is something in the story has moved on that kind of thing and it's a good way to end the scene you can keep the the dialogue going under this but the the characters can say you know that was a really good thing that happened and yeah next time we're gonna have to do it some this way or that way boy i'm glad we did it that way and then you roll credits that kind of thing so it can imply you know a a change in time or turning of the page as or. Now you want to be careful of jump cuts. Always jump cuts are when you have have two shots that are very very similar. All right. So here's here's one where where the jump cut is. We have a person um, positioned to the left of the frame, and then we're going to cut again, and they're positioned a little bit to the right. So this is one type of jump cut. Here's one where we've got two different shots and they're, they're framed a little bit different. You can see the background moves a little bit. So maybe our camera moved a little bit. Another kind of jump cut is when you have a, a you know, like a, 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 a shot framed like this, like a bus shot, but your next shot is maybe zoomed in a little bit or zoomed out a little bit, but not much. Right. And so you get a jump cut like that and you need a little bit more contrast between your shots. And I'm not talking about contrast of of light or color, but contrast in the uh, structure of the shot. Like you need a little bit more close up, a little more, you know, um, or a little bit more zoomed out. Right. And I'm always calling for this in, in the uh, in the video lab. You've probably heard me call it, you know, where the, we're going to get a jump cut. So I need one camera to to zoom in more and another camera to zoom out so that when we cut in between them, we don't get a jump cut. And that's what you want to watch out for. You've been doing this all along. You've been doing this in your um in your productions all along you've been you know you're we're at the stage in in our labs where you're directing and you've seen jump cuts and you know how to avoid them and you know how to structure uh, different kinds of shots and sequences of shots together right and you're experiencing that now and so this is the theory behind some of it. Please read chapter 12 and 13 uh, for the video editing, but this also has some good um, pointers for editing real, uh, you know, in real time on the video switcher, putting your projects together. And don't forget to take the quiz at the end of this, okay?